we're talking about permutations and combinations. And to start off with, because so many people can do these problems intuitively, I like to give a real world example. From the cafeteria menu for lunch, they want to know in how many different ways you could choose a sandwich, a side dish, and a dessert. So there are people that can do that quickly in their head, and there are other people that would need to write down every detail of it and say, okay, I have a hamburger, and I could choose a hamburger, and from there I could make three choices of a potato, potatoes, beans, or corn, and from each of those I have four different desserts to choose. So from each one you can see how many different ways, because this would be the apple crisp, this would be the banana, this would be the flan, and this would be the rice pudding. So we have lots of different choices, but as I said, if you realize that you have four sandwiches and three side dishes and four desserts, that we can quickly come up with that answer by multiplying those numbers together. And we would have 48 different lunches possible. So that's how we start off. Just reminding you that multiplication can be used to quickly count the number of ways certain things can happen. It is called the fundamental counting principle. If an event M can occur in M ways and it's followed by another event N that can occur in N ways, then the event M followed by event N can occur in M times N ways. Just like our lunches, if we have three pants and two shirts, then I have three possible choices of pants, two possible choices of shirts, three times two is six, and I get six possible outfits. And when I do these problems, I actually like to um, put down blanks for my choices. So when I go through this problem, in 1966, one type of Maryland license plate had two letters followed by four digits. How many of this type of license plate were possible? So hopefully you can think of that license plate and realize that I'm going to have six different items on that license plate. I'm going to have, uh, it's only five, we go. I'm going to have two letters and I'm going to have four digits. So we go back to those are the, the things that I've got to fill in. Then I'm going to go back and say how many different letters can I choose from? I have 26. It didn't tell me I couldn't repeat a letter, so I have 26 again. How many digits do we have to choose from? We go from 0 to 9, that's 10 digits. So each of these will be filled in with 10. Pull out your calculator and you should get an answer of 676 with four zeros. And we put our commas in and know that that's six million seven hundred and sixty thousand uh, I was going to put play ways, I used to write ways, plates or license plates. Okay, next when we do some of these fundamental counting principles you're going to see as we go forward that we multiply a lot of numbers and a lot of time we multiply um, every number on down. Um, when I say that, something, for example, might be if I had 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay? We have an, an expression to represent all of this so that you don't have to write it every time, and it's with the exclamation point, and it is read in factorial. You should all have a button on your calculator for it. And basically what it says is you start with n, and then you subtract 1, and subtract 2, all the way down till you get to the 1. So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is, in actuality, 4 factorial. And 4 factorial is equal to 24. So... Um, keep in mind also 
uh, or if you want to try again, 8 factorial. Find that button on your calculator, pause it, come back and put that in your calculator. You should get an answer of 40320, 40,320. The other important thing to remember is that punch 0 factorial on your calculator to make all of our problems work out. Uh, there is the definition of 0 factorial being equal to 1. So keep that in mind. If you forget, put it in your calculator. All right, there's two types of problems we're going to deal with. And as I said in the title, we have permutations and combinations. Let me define a permutation is the number of n items of a set arranged r items at a time. And that is the notation for it looks like npr. And that's defined as n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, keep in mind that r is always less than or equal to n, and of course less than or equal to 0. So if I have 10pr, or that would be 10 items arranged r at a time, then that would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial which becomes 10 factorial over 6 factorial. Now, what is 10 factorial? 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And I'm going to stop at 6 factorial because that's what I have on the bottom. And those, if I have the same thing on the top and the bottom, I can cancel it out. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 would be... 5040. Now, some people might question that, but just to just to refresh your memory or have you um, look at it the long way, if you didn't recognize that, okay, ten factorial remember is ten. Yeah, it doesn't look right. Try that again. Is ten times nine times eight times seven times six, five times four times three times two times one. And what is 6 factorial? It is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So when we write, once we get to what we have on the bottom, we can just write 6 factorial because you're going to see it's all going to cancel out in the end. Okay, our combinations, our permutations here were arranged. Okay, our combinations are chosen. It is in CR and it is defined as n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Again, r will always be less than or equal to n. So if I have five items chosen three at a time, it's going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. That becomes 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial. I'll give you a little hint. You haven't seen it because you haven't done enough of these yet. These two numbers will always add up to that top number. So if they don't, you've done something wrong. Okay? We're going to simplify it like we just did above. So I'm going to go 5 times 4. And I'm going to choose the bigger one times 3 factorial. I have 3 factorial on the bottom. And then we have 2 times 1. So my factorials cancel. 2 goes into 4 2 times, leaving me with an answer of 10. Okay? We also talked about that both of these buttons are on your calculator. So make sure you know how to use them. You're going to put in 10, select the button, and then type in 4 and hit Enter. Or 5, push the button, put in a 3, and then push Equals or Enter, whatever your calculator is. So check yourself. Make sure you know how to use that button on your calculator. Now we're going to go do some examples. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> There's a blank in the middle of that. Okay. This is the way I remember these two problems. Okay. Every time you think of a problem, you need to decide whether or not the order matters. Okay. If you answer yes to the question, 
then you have a permutation. If you answer no to the question, then you are, you have a combination, okay? And the way I remember that is the word order. I think about order all the time. Order has an R, so if it, order is yes, then I want the word that has the R in it. Permutation has an R, combinations does not. Okay, so let's go look at our problems. We have, how many ways can you arrange eight shirts on hangers in a closet? Okay, this problem can be done in several ways. Okay, so we do think about does the order matter here? Okay, anytime you are arranging or arranging shirts clothes in a closet, arranging students in a line, arranging books on a shelf, the order matters. Okay, so you can know that that's a permutation. And that permutation would be I have eight shirts and I'm arranging them, I'm going to choose all eight of them, or place all eight of them. So I would put 8P8 in my calculator, okay? Look at, um, the other way to think about it is, if I have eight hangers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and use my counting principle, how many choices of shirts do I have to put on the first hanger? I have eight. How many choices for the second hanger? Seven, because I've already put one here. And you'll see that it'll keep going down of the choices that you have to put on a hanger. And that, of course, becomes eight factorial. So is eight factorial the same as eight P eight? Well, according to our formula, eight P eight is eight factorial over 8 minus 8 factorial, and that is 8 factorial over 0 factorial, and how did we define 0 factorial? It is 1, so this is 8 factorial. So, however you choose to do it, you're going to get the same answer, and we have, as we calculated on the page before, 40,320 ways to hang those 8 shirts in a closet. Okay, how about runners? How many ways can 15 runners finish first, second, and third? Okay, does my order matter? Yes, it does. So I can do 15, the order matters, so I'm doing a permutation, and I'm only taking, out of the 15 runners, I'm only taking three of them, which is where you can think of it as three blanks, 15, how many places? I got 15 for the first place. So if somebody wins, then I only have 14 left for second place and 13 left for third place. Again, okay, just to show you the formula one more time, we're going to go, that would be 15 factorial over 15 minus 3 factorial. Oops. Factorial. That equals 15 factorial over... 12 factorial, which is 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 factorial, all over 12 factorial, and hopefully you can see we're back where we were. So either way, and you can go straight to the calculator, 15 NPR 3, and hopefully when you punch it in your calculator, you'll get an answer of 2,730 ways. Okay, next just some examples of making sure you know how to use your calculator so we went through them. If you want to pause and fill those out and then you can start the recording back and check your answers. The first one you should get an answer of 56. The second one you would get 36. The third one or C is going to be 3003. Those are all combinations. And then we have permutation, and we have 120, and we have 3,024. So make sure you know how to use your calculator because you don't want to do them by hand all the time. All right, the last example that we have is identifying, again, whether order is important. 
A chemistry teacher has a class work in groups to draw the molecular structure of water. Each group submits one drawing. There are eight groups. The teacher selects the four drawings that are in the highest grades. In how many ways can he select and arrange the four drawings from left to right on the wall? So if I'm putting four drawings on a wall left to right, does the order matter? Okay. As we've talked about, whenever you're arranging something on a shelf, lining it up, the order does matter. So again, we have a permutation. How many are we choosing from? We're choosing from eight. How many are we actually choosing? We're choosing four of them. Okay, so eight choose four. Put that in your calculator and you should get 1,680 ways. So, we had a lot where the order mattered. When would the order not matter? Okay, how could I change this problem so the order did not matter? And just so that you can kind of see the difference. If he didn't take them and arrange them on the wall, if he just wanted to pick, he's only picking four drawings out of the eight. And he's not going to hang them on the wall. That's an example. It doesn't matter which one he chooses first. So the order doesn't matter. And you would, on your calculator, do 8. Choose 4. And that would give you... That would be 70 different ways that he could pick 4 drawings out of the 8. So there you have permutations and combinations. In summary.